Good evening. Last week, last week we were looking at verse uh, 108, and in there it says that all phenomena of both samsara and nirvana does not exist by way of its own nature. In other words, whatever appears to our mind does not exist in the way that it seems to. So in terms of phenomena of samsara, this is what comes about in dependence on contaminated karma and our afflictions. All of these come about in dependence on causes, contaminated karma and afflictions, and are therefore empty. And those phenomena of nirvana, such as the paths that we cultivate in our continuum that will lead to uh, liberation from, from suffering, these also come about in dependence on causes and therefore are empty of inherent existence. Moreover, the verse goes on to explain that because all phenomena, whether of samsara or nirvana, come about in dependence on causes, they are empty of inherent existence. When one looks for their very nature, and moreover, when one looks for the very nature, one cannot find any nature that establishes them, therefore they are empty of inherent existence, but the way they exist conventionally is merely labeled by mind. So therefore, the two presentations of emptiness of inherent existence and dependence arising are complementary. Complementary, they are not contradictory. So just to now say as the translator, as an aside, the translations don't really get across the meaning entirely. I didn't make this point last week. So where it says in, in, in our either translation that there are two which are complementary and not contradictory, the two that it's referring to is, as Gessler, Gessler explained, emptiness and dependent arising. Because here, in, in the way it has to be translated, really, it seems like there are three things being discussed when there really are only two. Cause and effect is referring to dependencies on causes. So it's not cause and effect in the sense of karma, because that's how we usually use the term cause and effect. What's translated is what the Tibetan says, but it appears to us in the English that there are three things. Emptiness, cause and effect, and dependent arising. But it's really talking about two. Dependence, all results come about in dependence on causes. It's talking about dependency as well as emptiness. And these are the two that are complementary and not contradictory. Dunga 
Dongale Tarbegeta, Tarbe Tarba se top Udo Sembe Samno de Giadu, de Tarba Dungi Lur, Dij Gombatilla, Tarba Dungi Lur Jang Vasikurwad. And the Nigi, Jang Sane, Dineda, Dungale Dre Delia, and the Rang Se, the Chigre, Shansem Jessim and Tayebare, Chisna Jessim Jatamje, Rang Nash in Dewa de Bada, Dunga Miduba Chibare, Samje, Shim Jatamje, and Rang Lea, Jin Chimboda. And the ticket in Chimbore, she's a Simja Tamje Dungal Jaw to send by some Taja, Nessim Jatamje Tiawa, the Tena, some big Jamba Comiada, Simja Tamje Dunga, and Jawa Show, some big Nijo Com, the Samma Dush in the Chang. The Nigan, those child did that Simja Tamje Dunga, and Jaya de Tangi, Simja Tamji, Kuyu Dungal Dreja, Tarbi Gopon, the young Nitop, Yachi Rochi, Pamba Dugins, and be some Tadu. Then Pamba Dubala and Tap Chodu Juba de Caresin, San Yokova, Jesha, Tezang, San Yokova, Matun Tabin, San Yokova, Toprasho, San Pigetan, and the Niki Jajusem Gomia, Sam Dai Chagurva. Then eh, and the Jajusem Gomne, San Yokova, Toya, the Adan, Yamling Garachi was in it, then the Jimbe, Yamland, the Sudan, the Sudan, the Sudan, the Sudan, the Sheriff in Yamlandic, all those in the passion to gain Yamland to Sene, Yamland Jagores, Yamland Jimbadi, to Sene. Kissing the shoes and that in a game. She in the Dashere in Yamland de Lele, that don't buy you to be Shila Sundi, you come to you to be Lodu Combo, yes, and Sandy, and the Yukor Tadinia, two chin in Yamland, she hangs in body, Chasachi, she sour or that. How, how does one attain the state of nirvana, a state freed from all the, the suffering experiences of samsara? Well, the first step in the meditation is to reflect deeply on the sufferings of samsara. These need to be known, these need to be recognized. It's independence on recognizing the sufferings of samsara that one develops a yearning for freedom. And this yearning for freedom from the sufferings of samsara is definite emergence. And it, this generation, the generation of definite, definite emergence, is the prerequisite, the foundation for our ongoing spiritual development. The second step in the meditation is to remind ourselves that to the extent that one has come to recognize our suffering and why we are suffering, we take that understanding and see that it applies to all other sentient beings too. All other sentient beings are trapped within the suffering realms of samsara just like I am, for the same reasons, suffering in the same ways. Not only are we in the, the, the same situation, but we have a deep inter, in, in, interconnection, a deep relationship, that they, their activities throughout beginningless lifetimes have brought such benefit to me. They have directly shown me great kindness and through their own endeavors I have received so much benefit. I have a responsibility to them, to each being without exception, all of whom throughout beginning's lifetimes I have developed a web of relationships. Here one then generates a yearning. May all beings be freed of suffering. May they attain freedom from the causes of suffering. And this is the generation of compassion. And one develops it further thinking, may they abide in a state of lasting happiness and only develop the causes of happiness. And here one generates love. Then one generates love and compassion beyond a mere aspiration where one takes personal responsibility ensuring to, or to ensure that each and every being does indeed develop the causes for happiness and does indeed refrain from the causes that will otherwise lead to suffering. And this is the generation of the altru altruistic attitude of universal responsibility. But in order to fulfill that, one recognizes that right now one lacks capacity because one does not yet have the capacity to be able to guide others perfectly because one oneself is still deluded. Moreover, one doesn't yet know how to guide others perfectly in accordance with their own individual personalities. A Buddha, though, a Buddha, though, knows precisely how to guide others because a Buddha is a perfected being. So therefore, to fulfill my responsibility to others, I must become a Buddha. And here, one commits 
to striving to become a Buddha for the sake of others. And this is a generation of bodhicitta. And it is the second step of the meditation. The first step was meditating on, on the sufferings of samsara, and the second is, is developing bodhicitta. The third step then, now that one has generated a determination to become a Buddha for the sake of others, how does one do so? There are, there's a variety of practices of a bodhisattva can be summarized into the six perfections. Those of generosity, ethical restraint, patience, joyous perseverance, concentration, and wisdom. So here, one, here now one reflects on these six perfections. And we've also looked at here how in the perfection of concentration, one in particular needs to develop this union of calm abiding meditative insight and use that when meditating on the sixth perfection, that of wisdom. So this then is what we've, we've looked at over the past number of weeks. All of these stages of training that are included here in, in cultivation of definite emergence, firstly, the cultivation of bodhicitta, secondly, the training in the six perfections, thirdly, and in particular within that, the union of calm abiding and meditative insight on emptiness, all of these we've looked at. Tonight we'll start on, with verse 109, which is where we come to a brief presentation on secret mantra. And then it's like that. Then I do it in the chilling. And then I do it in the debunny. And then I do it in the chilling. And then I do it in the chilling. And then I do it in the chilling. Verse 109. And then please bless me to cross the deep ocean of Tantra through your great kindness, my navigator, Vajadara, and hold dearer than my life, my vows and words of honor, which are the roots of powerful attainments. Mm-hmm. Looking at the, the first line in the Tibetan, so it starts in the English with and then. So and then shows that now we're continuing from a, the previous section. We've covered the entire sutra path, which where we first looked at the meditations on the sufferings of samsara in order to generate definite definite emergence. And thereafter we looked at the presentation on the training to develop love and compassion and bodhicitta. And finally that of the wisdom realizing emptiness. So having trained in these is what the, uh, the term uh, and then refers to. Having trained in these, one relies on our Lama uh, uh, in order to receive an initiation. So here, uh, the second part of the first line in Tibetan, we have in our second line, my navigator Vajadara, or in the newer translation that you have in the blue book, uh, my captain. Vajadara, so captain or navigator. Uh, and then 
Dene Oh. Then the second line in Tibetan, which we have partially in the first and the second line, here, having trained well in the, 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 the parts of Sutra, now received um, initiation from one's navigator or captain of Atadara, so one's a spiritual teacher, one then um, recognizes his tremendous kindness in the training and initiation that has been received, and now one continues to rely on him, to train, uh, to train under him through hearing, reflecting on what one is, is studying with him, and then later meditating on what he, uh, he has taught one. So here, one receives initiation and then continues to be trained to receive teachings in how to now con- uh, develop uh, the paths of the secret mantra, and one does so through hearing, reflecting, and meditating. And thereby, and the second line in Tibetan continues, we have it in the first line, cross the deep ocean of Tantra. So the, in the, the, the newer translation, the depths of the ocean of Tantra. So this refers to the vast teachings of the four classes of Tantra. <laughs> Jacket,家族,パロシャルドワラ,家族,タディネバー,ゴソシン,パー,家族,キマチサー,ゲージ,パー,パシャルパー,ドワラ,家族,ジンガーワセ。Nigerian Looking a little further, that's across the deep ocean of, of Tantra. Here, what the, 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 the many classes of Tantra which are presented in our Galuk tradition as the, the, the Tantras of action, performance, yoga, and Tantra, so the four classes. These one hears teachings on, reflects, and later meditates on the classes of Tantra. And one, and, and these, these trainings are, are vast. So whilst the word is actually the word for, for deep or depth, it refers really more to vastness rather than profundity. So the vastness of these, these uh, uh, many trainings needs to be cultivated in order to cross to the state of enlightenment. The goal is that of Buddhahood, and through crossing um, over these, uh, or, or tra- uh, traveling through the uh, teachings of Tantra, one will attain the goal of Buddhahood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jamnijajajus 
Summarize the meaning of these first two lines is that having trained well in definite emergence, body cheats, and the wisdom realizing emptiness, then one relies on one's Lama to receive initiation as well as guidance in how to train one's mind. And here one hears, reflects, and meditates. So this then is the, the kindness of one's Lama, the kindness and the benefits that he brings brings to us. And it's through this process then that enlightenment will be achieved. <laughs> ngudupte Looking at the second two lines in the verse, and hold dearer than my life, and hold dearer than life my vows and words of honor, which are the roots of powerful attainments. <coughs> this then shows that in order to achieve the goal of Buddhahood, that one now engages in varying stage, stages of training, which starts with holding um, dearer than one's life, one's vows and words of, of honor. When the newer translation, they, um, uh, they, they, they use the word um, pledges. So the word, words of honor or pledges, this, um, we're more familiar with the Sanskrit word of samayas. So my vows and samayas. So these are, um, are what are required to be protected well in order to, what we have at the end, uh, uh, develop uh, our powerful attainments. So our, our vows and samayas are the roots of our powerful attainments, or again, we more familiar with the Sanskrit as that of cities. So cities or powerful attainments, that we can rank into two classes. There is the supreme city, which refers to Buddhahood or enlightenment, and then there are the um, the common cities, which are those uh, psychic perceptions such as clairvoyances. And the, 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 in order to achieve these, one has to guard uh, one's vows and samayas. That is what needs to be done firstly. ne So again here, that in, if one does not guard one's samayas and vows, one will not develop cities. In, in, or another way to uh, express that, without guarding one, one's ethics up through the samayas and vows well, one's practice will not be successful. The desired goals, both ordinary and certainly the supreme cities, will not be achieved. So therefore, it is of great importance to guard one's samayas and vows well. 
Non è da mettere, 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 non è da Wang Shubi, the Lamets and the Wang Shuni, Lamati, Lamet Wang Shuni, Lami Gana, the Langi, the Haran, Chigin, Sebigi, then the Niki Kilin, Big Hillin, the Damsixi, or the Kilin, Big Hillin, Damsi, the Kilin, Rare, Damjare, Della Damsixi, or it. The Niki Samlojorwa, then the same Giorangi, then the Chigin, Sebe, same Giorwa, Samlojorwa, or the Damsixi, I did it. What, what then is meant by and what is the difference between um, samayas and vows? So for, firstly, then let's look at that of, of samayas. So when one, one is receiving a, an initiation from one's, one's uh, teacher, then in the in the process of the teacher he will give spiritual instructions or pith instructions and there and included within those there'll be those where he is giving one advice you need to do this you need to engage in this practice you need to ensure you do these varying things and then you accepting that your mind that accepts this that promises that pledges that is the samaya so if i The word for samaya, um, we have here what word of honor, or um, what was the other one we had? Pledge. So pledge, word of honor, or promise. There are several words for promise. This is one of them. So, so I won't use the, the normal word of samaya, but use a pledge or a promise. Because the samaya is the pledge or the promise to do or to follow the spiritual instruction that one is receiving. That is the pledge. And, and the a Sanskrit word here for pledge or promise will be samaya. So it is this accepting, this commitment, this pledge to do something, to to do things. That is samaya. Just a gong guri as a sumba di, lammy ma sung di, so surrounding lammy so di, me lammy sumba, and the haram gumgins and big some killing director, some gumgins and be damja killing di, that did dam six at this morning. For example, in an initiation, the teacher gives the, the spiritual instruction, the pith instruction, meditate on bodhicitta every day. So that then is a spiritual instruction. You, as a student, take it, accept, or accept it. Your, your accepting of it, your pledge, I will meditate on bodhicitta every day, like you are instructing, in accordance with your path instruction, that acceptance, that promise, that pledge is the samaya. And again, remembering, when samaya, um, in English then here, you promising it, is the same word, or you pledging, same word as samaya. Uh, that is not that in ni Nagay, That's 
So again, in the initiation, the teacher gives the spiritual instruction. Every day, meditate on bodhicitta. Your promise to do so is the samaya. Here again, you are being instructed, your spiritual instruction is to do something. But also, there will be spiritual instructions during the initiation of not to do certain things. For example, don't kill sentient beings. Or, keep your practice of secret mantra to yourself. Don't make a big deal out of it. Don't um, make, it, make it public. Just keep it to yourself. And, uh, and Just keep it to yourself. So here, you are being told not to do something. Don't kill sentient beings. Don't publicize your spiritual practice. Here, your acceptance of this spiritual instruction is a vow. So the difference between the vow and the samaya is that both of them are a pledge, a promise, a commitment, an acceptance. But the difference is the samaya is the pledge to do something. The vow is a pledge not to do something. I won't kill. I won't uh, publicize my, my tantric practice. So therefore, this is a vow, promising not to do something, whereas the samaya is promising to do something. For example, to meditate on bodhicitta. And that didn't need to sung guri, said it, that I'm sitting on my sung guri, said it, that sung down the pen around to get a ticket. Miguel Chibong, two to sung guri, said it, same jan so to jig me, said that, Guma gug me, said the samlody, that's two to me the one. That's this sung, said it, Carson was in Jamba, the Shijin Nigi, the Kelly, the Gawa, the Jig, the Jig Minus, Daje, Guma, the Samlon, the Guma Guia, the Samlon, the Ligu, the Minus, some time, some time, Guma. Ligue Kuma Maguna did, Kuma Guna, Gawa Gala Chagro, Chesa, Jamba de Shijin Tende, Kaylin did not Gawa de Ligu de Mindu Sam Taj, Dil Malenel and Pa, Jenna, Jamba de Shijin Sung Tenjina, Dinle Majuba Gawadilla, and the Jambe Tinti Chimbadilla, and the Tsurim Sunga Lagroa, on Dinashin, Dadanga Tina, Daddy de Wong Shubi Gasso, and the Damja, Kaylin, the Damji Dang. And then he gave me a simple gay, some not tomba nibody, and then getting down to the gender, she's in danger, then he did a hot machabadi, and the dinner, she tata tata cheva de la suita, soon so as he grew water, tomba, damsit the tomba so as he grew water. Where one is very familiar with hearing about vows will be in the con. con uh, um, con uh, context of the ten non-virtuous actions where one uh, is told do not kill and the acceptance of the, um, not killing is a vow so, uh, so, uh, let's say not kill, not steal and so forth so the acceptance of this, um, uh, of this spiritual instruction is the vow then first step then the second step as one goes through one's life Utilizing vigilant introspection and mindfulness, one is aware of one's uh, mental process, and when th the situation, one encounters the situation where one can perhaps either kill the mosquito or uh, tell a lie, utilizing vigilant introspection and mindfulness, one will restrain restrain one's mind and thereby one's behavior. That's the third step, that of restraint. Hence, this is, in this way, a practice of ethics, of ethical restraint. So the sequence is firstly the, um, the creation of the vow, or to express it differently, the promise 
to fulfill the spiritual instruction, to refrain from certain behavior. Thereafter, relying on vigilance, introspection, and mindfulness, when one encounters situations where one can transgress one's promise, one res restrains oneself, refrains from doing it, and thereby one practices ethically. So that's a, a, an example that we're very familiar with. It's the same process with samayas and vows. <laughs> So the final line in the Tibetan is a little mix for us. Um, it first starts with, and hold dearer than my life. So this, as we have here, refers to my vows and words, uh, and my vows and samayas. The meaning here is, just like we take great care, we guard our life with great care, so too should we guard our samayas and vows. And, we, and the verse concludes with asking our Lama to, for blessings or inspiration, so that we do guard our vows and samayas with great care. Adeni ma şöyle de dire kişi bardu gevi kusumdu gürbe rimba tan be ne diyor ki tamam la gente ma kunca de gana ta go şaba cin yu lobs Then the hunter in 10th verse please bless me to cleanse all stains of grasping at ordinary appearance through the first stage yoga of transforming birth death and between into the three kayas of a buddha seeing whatever arises as the form of my yidam that We saw in the 109th verse that one is engaging now or embarking now on uh, the practi practices of the Vajrayana, developing the paths of the Vajrayana within in order to cross the deep ocean of Tantra. Well, actually, there we could be more specific because uh, it, it says the deep o ocean of the classes of Tantra. And of those four classes, those of action, performance, yoga, and highest yoga, here we come to the uh, training in the fourth class, that of highest yoga tantra. Uh, When one receives initiation into high yoga, a tantra of high yoga, there one will then be um, given advice in how to train, and the training is is broadly presented in two stages: that of generation stage and the completion stage. Here, um, in this verse, it refers to the first stage, that of the generation stage. <coughs> And <laughs>
the Tibetan starts with birth, death, and between. So here, then, the, the newer translation is a little clearer. It's in that it uses the, the word bardo. So it should be birth, death, and, uh, ba- uh, and the bardo, or in between. This then refers to, firstly, well, firstly, our samsaric experience is that due to the contaminated karma we've accumulated through our afflictions, we take uncontrolled re- uh, death and uncontrolled, followed by uncontrolled rebirth in samsara with a, an in-between period in the, in the bardo between death and, and rebirth. So this is our ongoing experience as beings bound in samsara. Tisan Our goal is to attain Buddhahood. And how does one do so? One needs to abandon completely the afflictions together with their seeds in their entirety. But our current situation is we take uncontrolled rebirth in samsara, uncontrolled, and we die without any control either. Everything is governed by our afflictions and our karma. But if we completely eradicate our afflictions, completely eradicate them, we will take no further uncontrolled rebirth in samsara. We will no longer uh, uh, die uh, due to karma and afflictions because our afflictions uh, have been eradicated. So therefore, another way to express our goal is to take no further uncontrolled rebirth in, in, in uh, uncontrolled rebirth or a period in the intermediate state or uncontrolled death. Jesus <laughs> Nanzuke A, a, a Buddha has three bodies or three kayas. So it's referred to as the three kayas or the three bodies of a Buddha. Sanskrit, the Dharmakaya, Sambhoka Kaya, and Nirvana Kaya. In English, the, the, um, the, the, the truth body, the enjoyment body, and the emanation body. So the, the Buddhas have these three bodies Dharmakaya, Sambhoka Kaya, and Nirvana Kaya. So our current state is that we take uncontrolled death, we th- thereby arrive in the intermediate state of the body and take uncontrolled rebirth, all due to our afflictions. So what we're striving to do is eradicate our afflictions to attain enlightenment. So we want to eliminate the possibility of taking a rebirth due to the afflictions, dying due to the afflictions. 
So what we are wanting to do is change each of these three states, death, intermediate state, and rebirth, change them or transform their very essence into the essence of a respective body of the Buddha. Change or transform the essence of death into the Dharmakaya. Change the essence of, of the intermediate state into the Sambhokakaya. And change the essence of rebirth into the Namanakaya. So again, change the essence of uh, death, intermediate state, or, uh, and, and rebirth into that of the three bodies of a Buddha. Da dini gi nga zu ye jie wa da qi wa da mba rdo sun bo di san yi yi qiu gu lung gu zhu gu sun yung wo nyu gu wo re di ngong wo yun na kan is qiu gu re la du de ji lam nyam le rin ba kirim nyam le ndang zogrim yi nyam le nje ba de nyam le nje yung du an di nyam le nje ba le di ni an yu gu wo re ye sa ji di di gu ri ya ge tab lam di ka re sa ni lam nyam le yi rin ba di ka re sa ni kirim yi nyam le nje dang zogrim yi nyam le nje di re sa ni Repeat that, um, repeat that. What, in order to fulfill one's goal of attaining enlightenment through the practice of highest yoga tantra, one strives to transform the essence of, of death into the, the body of the Buddha, the Dharmakaya. One strives to transform the essence of the intermediate state of the body into the essence of the body of the Buddha, the Sambhokakaya. And one strives to transform the essence of rebirth into the body of the Buddha, Namanakaya. So how does one strive? What is the method? Firstly, training in the, uh, uh, the generation stage, and secondly, in the completion stage. Kusum kusum se ming tago de shi kusum kusum se bar nga zu le shi kusum ming tago kan es tago la ne chi wo chu gu la go nga zu ge shi de de le ming chi wo chu gu su ming tago chu gu la go me chi wo chu gu su ming tago de de ne ma ge wa le de la bar do ge wa le de bar do de la bar do long gu se la go de de ne ma an bar do ma ge ne ami ma ma zu nga le ge de 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 la an ga so ジャンネコミンテジャンシゴマドイナコスムウェネデマレシーネカプスウェビコスムセオダンアンジュゲアンジュレランチュスウェビデニケアンジュネカプラマニャレマジベネカプラカリオセネシワヨレバドドゥ
So this is mm, drawing a connection with the Dharmakaya and the death process, the um, Sambhokakaya and the intermediate state, and the uh, Namanakaya and rebirth. Uh,大家已经几个数字了。当然,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个
and how, how is it done? As it continues through the first stage yoga of transforming both death and um, uh, the in-between state or, or the bhado. So here the object of abandonment, uh, objects of abandonment is to cleanse all stains of grasping at ordinary appearance. Mm And the verse concludes with um, seeing whatever arises as the form of my yidam, and then uh, please bless me to be able to do this. So with each of these verses, we tend in English to start with please bless me, but that's always the last um, of uh, the last of the verse. Is that the kissing on the gene she do don't buy any yamja also don't buy you come don't buy you come you do yamja don't buy you come near Tongba You'll recognize that this is very similar to what we covered um, a few weeks ago in verse 107, where having meditated well and meditated equipoise on emptiness, after the meditation session when one goes about one's business, when one's in subsequent attainments, there the training is to take whatever arises as to be like an illusion, recognizing from one's meditation that it doesn't exist in the way that it appears. It's empty of existing in the way that it appears and relate to it rather as if it is like a, a, a mirage, a dream, or the moon's image on a still lake. <laughs> Here in High Circle Tantra, the way um, the training is of what is referred to in the 107th verse, the training is that in meditative equipoise, so like into verse 106, I suppose, there uh, one is meditating on the deity and the mandala. Then when one enters into subsequent attainment, going about one bus one's business, one takes that whatever appears to consciousness as a, 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 whatever arises, as we see in the fourth line, whatever arises to consciousness as being uh, a, a, like the deity or like the mandala. What one has to recognize that we, without having studied Tantra in depth, then what one he is hearing here really will not carry much meaning. It will be difficult to really get much from such a, a brief presentation. But nevertheless, for those in, in that situation, the imprints are greatly valuable. <laughs> 
ยำเนจีเกตุยกสุยำเนจีปานะซาวาซาวาเนยำเนจีเกตซาวาดิชิซะดิอาจุเกจันจูเซมกุมยาตาตงยุตุเบเชรับจิดกุกุกอเรติน
Java show, Dunga Mayon show, some by some Chiovena, Simje Dunga Yagi, Lara Guinea, Maran, the Carson, Simjin, Changi, and Kuma Kumare, she has a Kuma Kuna consul in Nigor, Konda Ganga Chigri, she's an indigenous Maris, Nikuma Kumar, Shanle, Tawa Chigi Mare, and Jingayu Connection, the Junshin of Gorta, the League Mare, and Luju Connection, the Tawa Chia, the League Mare. And the Dinigas, some little Tony, Shelly, and Nubachi, some of the Guinea League Mare. Just a dance, Shelly, and Nubachi, and some of the men, Luju Konukuma, or the Tivi Javadi, Lia Mare. Just a Dinigi, Shelly, a jumper, the Zero Combina, Digi, Tony, and Ranzi, Lunaki, Tivi Java Chasanka, and Sujimi Yamle Yawayada. Then the Shelly, Zero, and Pembis, Ninji, some of Yobina, Susu Shelly. Rangi, the Kim Tada, Kim Tare, Dinni Pazi Bigata, Rangi, Yehapta, Rangi, Zemlinagi, Semjin Mida, Semjin Samalia, and the Jamba that Zewa Kumkuris, Dinni Gombaina, and then Rajuke, Kim Tashide, and then Chikanazu Kihabna la Shidiare, and then Zemlinalia Shidu, Dutukuris, Dininza, Shidu Dubaina, Chazan Dutubaina, Shidu Dubaina, and the Garsene, Motu Mares, and the Kumjige, Shelia. Matu Mede, then Rashingi, Milia, and the Chigge, then Digi Ungres, just a Digi to go at Zawa, Jamzo Combo, Kishim Shuri, Sungorwa. Amongst these meditations, there's such benefit in meditating on love and compassion, where love is developing the sincere wish may others be happy, may others only abide in happiness. May they focus on accumulating solely the causes for happiness. And similarly, with a mind of compassion, may others be freed of pain, may they be freed of all difficulties, and may then no longer accumulate even a single cause that will lead to suffering. And to the extent that one can develop, uh, generate the thoughts of love and compassion with sincerity within oneself, one will purify so much past negative karma. And moreover, one's uh, present mental state will be peaceful, calm, open and spacious. And from, he uh, on, from here on, under the influence of these minds of love and compassion, due to the transformation of our way of thinking, our interaction, interactions with others too will be transformed. To the extent that one de develops love and compassion in meditation and then reminds oneself throughout the day of love and compassion, one will not harm others. How will one be able to talk harshly to others with a mind of love or a mind of compassion? How will one be able to talk harshly about others or act harshly towards others? If one's mind is dominated by love and compassion, it will be impossible. Therefore, the cultivation of love and compassion greatly aids ethical restraint. Moreover, to the extent that we generate genuine love and compassion in meditation and keep it alive between meditation sessions during our day, whenever we encounter someone who needs some help, some assistance, we'll look for such opportunities and in finding them, we'll embrace them and with joy, we'll help others to the best of our abilities. We'll do so with ease. We won't feel any resentment or, or, or feeling obliged to, but you'll do so with sincerity. And even when helping others, if they show ingratitude or they t would take advantage of us, or wanting more and more from us, our mind will stay undisturbed. We will not get annoyed with them. We will not be worn out or, uh, by giving to others because of the strength of our joy, love and compassion for them. So thereby, not only is our ethical restraint aided by love and compassion, but so too is our generosity and our patience. 
So this shows just how important love and compassion is, and therefore His Holiness the Dalai Lama encourages us in all of his talks to cultivate love and compassion. He reminds us that if we want to live in a harmonious household, if we want to get on with our family at all times, no matter what's going on in their lives, generate love and compassion. Deep longing for them to be happy. A close and tender feeling for them. And to the extent that we generate that, not only will our mind be at peace and thereby have harmony in our household, but so too will our contribution to our community, and as thereby ever more people become uh, uh, have peaceful hearts, kind hearts, peace will develop between nations. So this is how His Holiness encourages us as individuals to develop ourselves in order to add to harmony between communities and even world peace and bring an end to all forms of conflict between individuals, communities and nations. Benangi Pendure Young Pajodilly Jawa we relate to with um, in a in a in a maybe in a we could say in a wholesome manner we could divide the, that class though all those beings into three there are those that we are genuinely close towards those that we have a tender feeling towards those who we look forward to seeing whose company we enjoy our loved ones so there's that class our friends and our loved ones then there's another class who are um, who are, who are wealthy and either do help us financially or um, have the potential to help us financially. That's a second class. With, and the third being a, a, a those who have power and influence and either utilize that to benefit us or um, potentially can utilize their power and influence, their name and reputation to benefit us. So there are these three classes of people that we tend to relate to with politeness. What's clear is with those in the first class, it's, it is more unconditional 
and the kindness, the gentleness is sincere. Those in the second two classes, those who have wealth or, or great influence, there, whilst we may relate, relate to them in, in a polite manner, our relationships are not stable because they may lose their wealth they, or they may lose their, their reputation or their influence. And the way we feel about them and the way we relate to them will greatly change. Suddenly we will not want to be associated with them anymore. Or even if they don't lose their, their, their wealth or their reputation, but they help someone that we dislike or we compete with, we'll also want to have nothing to do with them. Whereas those in the first class, the, our friends and our loved ones, those whom we genu genuinely do care for, no matter the, the situation, as our relationship uh, changes and goes through varying uh, situations, we'll still care for them. We'll still want the best for them, even if they are having a hard time. ちょっと、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、